So welcome back to another ride along session with me in the beautifully sunny Alpe d'Huez in the heart of the French Alps. Where today I'm going to be focusing all about ski touring mistakes. Things you can do better to make things a little bit easier when you're ski touring up. And before I get to mistakes and how you can be a better ski tourer, I think we should just get one thing out in the open to start with. And that's for me, ski touring, putting skins on our skis and hiking through the snow is all about the route down. The reason that we're going to be touring all over the place and on these adventures is as pleasant as the walk is on the way up, it's to access places that other people can't get to. I want to get to the great snow, the great conditions, the big open powder fields. So while the walking up is very pleasant and very nice and it's a good chance to spend a bit of time with your friends, we're all about the descent. We're going to find somewhere that we can get to that's going to have some great snow for the way down and most importantly with these mistakes and these tips I'm going to be giving out it's all about how we can save our energy be more efficient on the way up or the way out so that we've still got energy to enjoy that cracking descent on the way back down wherever that may be so stick with me So the first mistake to start with is about the steps that we take. And it sounds so simple that you just stick on some skins and start walking, but a lot of the movements we make are a complete waste of energy, tire you out, you won't have anything left in the tank for when it's time to descend. The first one then is about sliding the ski. We're not aiming to lift the ski with every step. They're quite heavy usually, the skis and the skins that we've got, and even if the lightweight ones, it's just an unnecessary step. So we're aiming to slide the ski through the snow keeping it pretty much in contact with the snow the entire time. It's much less energy, much more glidey, slidey sort of movement. Also helps keep the skin in contact with the ski a little bit, stops any snow getting between them. But most importantly, it's a lot less energy. The next consideration or mistake that I commonly see with ski touring and the steps that we're taking is people taking far too bigger steps or far too small steps. What we're aiming for is somewhere a little bit bigger than a, a normal stride, let's say. That way you have to take a few less than normal and it helps you keep the ski in contact with the snow. But you're not aiming for a huge power lunge as far forward as you can because as you can imagine with a lunge, that uses a lot of energy as well. Somewhere in between. Bigger than a normal walking step, but not as big as it feels awkward and like a big lunge. I'll show you some, uh, some mistakes here. These first ones you're looking at are far too small. Although it feels like you're not using a lot of energy because it's going in very small steps, small increments. Ah, oh, that shouldn't use too much energy. But actually it's, it's repeated. You're doing th so many thousand more steps than you need to do. So in the long run, it's definitely going to be a waste of energy. These next ones you're looking at are far too big. It almost looks like we're trying to do some cross-country lunging, powering forwards as far as you can. And just to repeat that word, if you're lunging, you're clearly using energy. That's the sort of thing you go to the gym to do, not while you're trying to climb up a mountain or across the side of a nice hill. Somewhere in the middle, a bit bigger than normal, but not as big as a power lunge. So mistake one was all about the steps you take and how to just make it a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner, a little bit less energy. Mistake number two is the route that we choose. Where we decide to actually take our hike and do our skin track can make a huge difference to how much energy we expel. It's a bit of an educated guess as to where exactly we go. For example, the peak I'm aiming to go up just now, I could go a three or four kilometre route around the side of the hill along a very mellow footpath, road style track, and that'd get me to the top. Probably take me about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, but it's a very gentle incline. Or I could take the route that I'm currently on, which is going up, up a steep bank, but I'm going diagonally across it. We're aiming to the top, up behind that lift, up that way that's not running and behind the trees. I'm definitely not gonna go straight up the face there, 
going up something super steep may be essential occasionally, but as much as possible, we really don't want to go too steep. We don't want to go too shallow. We're aiming, and you can probably just about see that skin line that's cut diagonally across the hill. And I'm going to follow that track most of the way up. The route we choose, if there's an old skin track, something that you know that's going to be pretty good, use it. Whilst breaking trail is great fun, it's a really nice feeling getting your skis into the fresh snow and padding in that route. It definitely uses a lot more energy than having someone else that skinned the route already. That comes into the groups you use as well. We're always going to be skiing in groups of three or more, just for safety and making sure you're looking after each other. But it means you take it in turns to lead the route. If you're breaking track, you're going to go first for a third of the time, then you'll switch it around, someone else will go first. So this route ahead of me, you can see is an old skin route that someone's put in at some point, then there's been a little bit of snow past it. Looks pretty good, doesn't look too steep. Doesn't look like I'm going to waste loads of energy going straight up the, uh, the steep bit up that way. It's also not just a waste where I'm just traversing across to get to the next bit. I'm actually making a bit of ground with each step up here. So that's going to be my route for the next bit. That looks like quite a good selection. And I know where it pops out on the other side is where I want to be too. This is quite a nice example here of following the terrain. So we had the option, or the guys ahead of me had the option of popping in a turn and going up the steeper side there. Well, we could have gone up at the same gradient or what looks like a much better option that they've done and this is exactly what I was hoping they'd done is they follow the terrain around the side. It's a little bit of a wiggly route, but it's kept the gradient that we're climbing on fairly consistent. If we keep it fairly consistent, our bodies can get used to what it is we're doing without a sprint and then a flat and a rest and then a sprint and flat. It's a good way of tying you out. A consistent path, a consistent gradient of the climb and a consistent pace is going to conserve a lot of energy and get you ready for that way down. Just a little consideration as I'm coming up towards the ridge ahead of me here. And that's as ski touring and backcountry skiing. People often think that we start at the bottom, we walk up to the top and then we ski back down. Which of course is exactly what I'm doing today, but it's not always the way. And this is what I think a lot of people missed out on in terms of the routes that we choose and where we go. Being able to ski into the middle of nowhere, the route that doesn't go if you like, that's the opportunity that you've got if you've got some skins and if you're ready for a bit of a tour. There's a lot of routes that are perfectly safe, nice and shallow. They just don't finish at a lift or a road. They finish in a bowl or they finish at a little village that doesn't have any lifts or just finish somewhere you can't ski out of. So some of the best tours in inverted commas that I've done is we've skied some incredible descents where it's lift access the whole way up. Maybe a short little skin just to get to a ridge or a slight traverse to get to the entrance point. Incredible skis down and then actually the tour out is flat. We don't even have to climb. There's some great ones here in Aptuers when we start at the top of Peak Blanc, 3,300 meters, go all the way to the other side to this little village called Clavin or even just before Clavin and then you can start touring out from there and you end up about three to four kilometers of skinning pretty much flat and then you're back on the piece to finish from there. So you haven't really got to walk that far, or most importantly, the bit that knackers you out, you haven't got to walk that far up. You haven't got to climb 500 meters or a thousand meters vertical to get in or out of where you're going. It's just a walk across the road in the flat. It's just worth the thought. We're still on the route we choose. The direction I want to go is just over that mound ahead of me here. And then I've got a big open face in front of me ready to ski down. But the final climb is a lot steeper than I'd like. So there's a couple of things you can do to help yourself out just there. First of all, I'm going to knock up my risers, which I haven't been using up till now. Quick flick. I've knocked up the risers, made it a little bit easier to go. The next thing that happens usually where people go wrong is they end up trying to climb up the mountain like you would if you were just wearing shoes, hunched forwards, standing on the tips of your feet, the balls of your feet. The actual technique to get up this steep section just here is once I've kicked my risers into gear, I'm then going to stand on the heels of the skis, making small steps, making sure the ski is bedded in, but I'm very much on the heel and the back of the ski to allow the skin to grip.
It's another one of these decisions here. Straight up the steep bit. Nope. Much easier. Around the side. And popping onto the other side from there. Conserve that energy. Save it for what's going to be an amazing way down with this snow. There's another classic mistake I see when we're out ski touring. We're either looking at tracks or seeing other people around the place is unnecessary kick turns. Now a kick turn is super useful. It's a skill you need to learn the more you're going to be ski touring. However, at least to get started with and depending on the terrain you're on, you may not need to use them. And the reason you won't want to use them unless you have to is like they use unnecessary energy. It all comes back to that descent that I was talking about earlier. Save your energy for the descent. So instead of kick turning, sometimes if it's not too steep or if you can get to a little plateau, instead of doing a big kick turn and trying to swing off in the other direction, just take tiny little steps, making sure that your weight is on the back of the skis and the ski is flat on the snow and just shuffle and step your way around before continuing in the other direction. Much easier. On the subject of kick turns, if you've not learned the kick turn yet, make sure you stay tuned and subscribe to this channel. There's another video on here that you can learn a little bit more about how to make kick turns efficiently and a little bit easier. Mistake number three, or top tip number three, if you like, is all about the gear you're using. Uh, and basically spend some time getting to know what you're on and what your mates are on, what the rest of the group you're riding with are on. The more you know about the way these bindings fit together, the way that my skins attach different to my riding buddy skins, the way that the, the straps work in your bag. At some point, maybe you'll need to, to strap your skis or your snowboard onto your pack and boot pack up for a little bit. Learn about your boots and the different settings you can have. And you might realize that the walk mode or the ski mode are just in slightly different ways. And there's different ways you can make things easier for yourself. One little example is the atomic shifts that I'm on just here are an amazing binding, but if you don't remember to lock this front piece fully up, not just up a little way, but fully up, then you risk losing the pins. They risk falling off, well not the pin itself, your boot risks falling off, disconnecting from the ski. And it'll only happen when you're on a tricky point and you put some stress in it. For most of the time you'll be cruising along like this, no problem at all. Suddenly a slightly off angle bit of snow that you catch, bing, it's gone. And you're in a tricky situation. Learn about your gear, learn about your mate's gear, and on a similar line, top tip that you're gonna hear me come back to time and time again, is never go anywhere without a roll of duct tape. Mini little roll is all you need, but so many situations you can find yourself in can be fixed with a little bit of tape. Maybe, for example, the glue's gone on your skin and it's just not working, or one of the tags at the tip of the tail has gone. Quick bit of duct tape, you can save yourself out of the situation. A bag strap's gone, there's a hole in your jacket, something's gone wrong with your boot duct tape it back up, no problem at all. Even a bit of first aid, someone's cut themselves here, you know what, stick on a wound dressing, duct tape it up, we'll get it back to the medical center. Never got anywhere without duct tape. So this is us, we've just made it to the top of our first first climb of the day and a little bonus tip just to finish with before we start a bit of a descent and having some fun is as soon as you get to the top as desperate as you are to drink to get some water some food and snacks the first thing you do is put your layers back on you might be boiling hot on the climb but as soon as you stop you're going to get cold very quickly you can see I've taken one of my face layers off just here I'm going to pop that one back under the jacket I'm wearing and the other thing you probably have noticed is I'm wearing a, a baseball cap just now I'll always have three different types of headgear when I'm touring, uh, just depending on the heat really. So it's quite a warm day today, or it was when I was climbing up. Uh, so I've got the baseball cap on, I've got a beanie just in case it gets a bit colder, and of course I've got the helmet I'm going to switch onto for the way down. I've been using the, been using the buff quite a lot as well, just for cold ears, like it's too hot to wear a beanie, but your ears get cold. It's always good having a buff around your neck as an extra thing as well. So, time to get changed. On a similar line to different headgear for the way up. I've got different gloves and of course different glasses and goggles for the way down as well. It's so much easier for simple lightweight changes make all the difference to being comfortable on the way up and then switching it for the way down. So normal ski gloves not thin ones for touring on the way up versus the way down and goggles rather than sunglasses for the way down as well. It makes, makes it so much more comfortable. Small little things adding to your bag really doesn't make that much difference in the weight will make all the difference to the ride down and like I said at the start that's what it's about so skis and my boots are back into ski mode I've had a little break had a little bite to eat 
and it's time to reap the rewards. It's time to ski back down. And what looks ahead of me doesn't look crazy deep, but it does look like some pretty good powder. Let's see how it slides. Woo! Worth every step. See some nice rollers coming up ahead of me here from biking around here in the summer. I know this area fairly well. And of course, from years of skiing around here. So there's a few nice routes to pick out on the way down here. We're gonna be doing a few of them today, I think. Oh, perfect. 